Hey, Karen. Hi, good How's afternoon. It How's it going? How's it going? I'm good, just really hungry. Right, right. So, guys, this is Karen John. Um, really amazing person, and you all are going to get to know him today. So, Karen, for the people who are listening, what would you like to tell them about you? Well, the main thing is to know that I'm a contemporary visual artist, you know, striving to be one of the greats in the world. Right. I think you're on the right track, you know. Uh, we'll get into a few of his pieces today, uh, so you all get to know what is his style, you know. I mean, I, I really want to get to know what art uh, gives you, mm. right? Because personally, I'm going to just talk a little bit about my journey in art. My mom used to teach art. Mm. She's really into the arts. Um, and I was pretty good mm -hmm. at art, but I didn't have the interest. And I think when I stopped in form two, the interest just like vanished. But uh, in my gap year, I did a few courses on, and I just started to get interested in philosophy in general. And every time someone has a philosoph philosophical idea, mm -hmm. art and beauty always comes into the equation. And like, what is art? What is beauty? So I want to get inspired and hopefully inspire other people to really get into this art scene, okay. all right? So let's jump right into it. Why do art? Okay, well, the simplest way I can answer that question, I do art because I love it. Mm -hmm. I believe it is really part of who I am in my DNA because ever since I was small, I always used to be drawing and I was born into the family where my mom and my grandparents were like artists. Not like artists, like practical artists, but artists in the sense that they study art and they have somewhat of, they have talent in it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of stuck on to me and I, every single day I just think about art, I just think about ways I could paint something. I would look at somebody or something in the environment and you know, just visualize it in a kind of artistic expression. So I think art is just really who I am, you know. Mm -hmm. That's great, man. Now, you have a very unique style when it comes to art, in my opinion. Now, I am no art connoisseur. Well, I don't know if you got inspiration from someone, but I want you to tell people a little bit about it. And while you do that, I'm going to pull up some pictures for them. OK, well, I wouldn't say I have a style. I, I would say I'm experimenting. So I'm in my experimental stage, trying to find who I am. Um, so before this body of work I have for my upcoming show opening on Friday, um, I didn't have a style. I was kind of like just trying to find my niche, trying to draw and paint realistically. Because to me, at that point in time, when I was like, what? Probably in form four. Like that, I was drawn to that now. And I came across an artist called Hendrik Alden. I think that's how it's pronounced his last name. He is this UK Korean artist who does figurative paintings, oil paintings, in a kind of very super realistic, contemporary style, in a kind of dreamy like. So the figures are like painted traditionally, like how Renaissance artists like Leonardo da Vinci paints portraits. Mm -hmm. And he put a contemporary twist on it where he takes the paint and he plays with texture and he kind of brings all kind of uh, emotional, expressive manner of feeling the painting. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're dreaming. It's, it's very hard to explain. It's um, to me, it has started something like that you have to look at and feel. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really hard to put words into, in my opinion. And that, that is one of the struggles to me mm -hmm. with art. I am a very, I like to think a lot, I'm a very critical thinker. Mm -hmm. But art calls for a different level of you have to be receptive emotionally to really appreciate art. Mm, I, I think it, it depends on the subject matter and what you're trying to portray in your work. So my work, so for my show, this body of work, which is called Emotions, it is based on my experience you know, with like depression and you know struggling with my mental health and stuff. So music is something that aided me in trying to get the ideas and how to 
play with the paint and play with the texture and try to bring out my emotions onto the canvas because I was filled with a lot of negative vibes and energy and music kind of like cut that energy out of me mm -hmm. and it just it flowed through my hands and, and, to, and onto the brush and it guided me on, on how to bring forth that, that energy onto the canvas any artist in particular in, the, in particular locally artists? no just like in general what music really brought oh, that out talking about oh okay yeah. um recently i've been getting more into tanashi her mixtapes like it was just mix it called um what's the mix up again joy ride so i was playing that mystic mixtape very on loop mm -hmm. throughout the whole period well through the last few months um team impala um what type of music is that though i've never heard of these okay, people team impala is like god i it's like it's alternative okay so he yeah. does a lot of instrumentals God, it's, it's really hard to explain, you know. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, do you know who's Lana Del Rey? Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like that, but more instrumental bass. Okay. He, he sings and stuff, mm -hmm. but to me, the production-wise of the song kind of bring forth the kind of emotions, like Lana Del Rey. She, her artistry is poetry and how she, her vocals are. Team Impala is the same with writing too, but that's the production wise. Mm -hmm. um, FK Twigs. Um, FK what? FK Twigs? Twigs. I know somebody called FKJ, French Kiwi Juice. Oh. He does, he does, he can seem kind of like instrumental, a little bit of singing sort of thing. Okay, so who else again, boy? <laughs> um. So all of those um, people, it was like sort of like your drug to bring out the emotions that you wanted to bring forth in your art. Because the show that you recommended me to watch, right? Mm -hmm. you, you saw the sort of how these artists are so in connect with like the unreal, the, the, the sort of spiritual aspects of our lives, the sort of transcendental things. Mm -hmm. And you know, you would hear oftentimes like musicians and, 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 and artists would turn to some sort of means, sometimes through drugs, that would bring out that sort of feeling. Right? So you could say that your music is sort of like your your inspiration sort of um first of all i usually get dreams or epiphanies in my head mm -hmm. so i'll probably like be sleeping or just daydreaming and i get like ideas in my head and i usually use instagram or pinterest as a means of getting visual inspiration to go with my ideas in my head because mm -hmm. My ideas usually come as an image, and I put a word to that image. So, like this painting here is mm -hmm. called Lucid Dreaming. So, is it about a uh, the guy? He's he's daydreaming, and the brush strokes of the color that is coming out of his body from his face represents signals of light that goes towards the brain and all around your body. So, while you're dreaming or while you're sleeping, I should say, your brain works. And right. your brain is what helps renew your body for the next day. So, so the, the paint brushes, the brush stroke kind of symbolize the kind of flick of light that your brain sends out to your, your whole body to renew your body. Interesting. So Interesting. as I said, I get inspiration from dreams in my head and I go on Pinterest or Instagram and I try to get visual pictures like pictures because I have photo shoots of models so I had a, a, a photo shoot of this guy called um, Richard King he's a model and I asked him to pose in different ways because usually the idea in my head is usually the finished product it's not the how to say it, like not like these stages okay. if I'm making sense so with so you you were thinking that this is what you wanted it to come out you kind of no 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 okay. so i asked him to pose in different gestures and i just choose which is the best gesture that i feel connected to and i use music while i paint so usually i paint realistic in the first one or two layers and the last layer is when i take the paints and i implement an element of abstraction to it to kind of 
bring forth my soul into it. Because to me, I just love the whole correlation of realism and abstraction. Mm. To me, that is, I don't know, it does, it appeals to me more. To me, it tells more of the artist and his, how his brain works and how his emotions are into his work. Because to me, realistic work, like photorealistic, to me, is like more of a, a skill rather than, how to say it? It's more of a skill rather than... Like a passion, sort of. No. More of a skill rather than... Like your creativity. Okay. Right? Okay. That makes that make more sense. So before I used to be into realism, more into the creative side. So it's an experimental journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of trying to experiment. So this was like the first stage of this experimental journey. The next body of work might be something a little bit different, but it will stay in the same line of the whole elaborate brush strokes. And then more and more of my body of work as I progress into my career, then I will, f I will finalize on what is my style, you know? So to answer your question, yes, music is really a driving force into how I conceive my paintings to look and the ideas and stuff like that. It really helps with bringing forward the emotions. But in my I to different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Not only um, alternative related to hip hop and rap. So hip hop and rap will like give me the kind of energetic feeling that I need. So usually I will listen to hip hop and rap at the last stage because at at the last stage of the painting, I'm kind of over it. Like I want to just finish it. Right, right, right. So I need something to kind of like pop me up to kind of finish it. Um, the alternative R&B pop soul that is why I use throughout the beginning stages of the process where I kind of like playing around with the paint, pushing paint, playing with colors to try to like bring out what the final product, what, what the final product may look like. All right, that's cool. Okay, so Karen, we're going to go through a few more of your pieces here. Is this touch screen? Can I swipe? Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, so we're going to go through a, f a few of them. And we're gonna, I want you to just tell us a little bit about each, right? And I'm gonna ask you some stupid non-artist questions as we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think I skipped one there. Let's see what's going on. Where did the mouse go? All right, yeah. Is this the second one? All right, yeah, that is the second one. All right, so talk to me. I really like this one, boy. Um, this one is called I'm Insane. So this is a acrylic painting so this was like the third painting i did in the, in the series is it was more of a trying to figure out the idea of the whole body of work in terms of the aesthetic um this is my brother he's as a model um it, the main idea of the piece is kind of self-explanatory based on the name i'm insane mm -hmm. um at that point i'm a lot of i had a lot of stuff in my mind and it was very contradictive of my, so I have stuff in my mind and I have different emotions. So it's kind of like in contradicting okay. everything. So I was like very, very moody. So it's like, I felt like if I wasn't seeing, mm. kind of like a saying is not really, you know, like a kind of figurative saying, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole idea for that. So I used the model to kind of portray that more so what's the word um no i notice in you have one side light one side dark any uh, reason for that in the studio um we just i was playing with lighting i just find that kind of effect to me looks really dope because it kind of give more drama to the piece because the next side of the face is very dark the next side of the face is light yeah. So you can probably say probably life it is like side with God, the dark side, the side with the devil. I don't know. However you interpret it. I like that. I like that. And and you spoke about spoke about interpretation there. So so you for you art, what you bring out in a piece, you think it should be interpreted other than you intended it to or other than the emotions that you felt? Well, this body of work is very uh emotional body of work and it plays with your emotion. The whole idea is to try to get the viewer to feel a certain type of way. I was not trying to 
get the viewers to feel what I was trying to say in the painting is correct to their emotions. So people can have their own, their own input on the painting, however they feel like, you know, so everybody could interpret this in a different kind of way, which is fine, you know, art is very subjective, so people have their own <clears throat> ways of experiencing new things, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. All right, so we're going to check out this one. Now, this one was the first painting I, painting I did in the body of work. It is called Dying Inside. So this was kind of like relating to the the first huge painting I did that I sold in Horizons Art Gallery. Um, so I, I at the beginning, this went to different stages. So at the beginning, I wanted to do the kind of comparison of realism with abstraction, which is the colorful side. But midway in the painting, I was like, hey, what well, this is not and I'm really feeling this because I was very much emotionally not there because mm -hmm. I was at that stage I, my depression and what I was dealing with and my, in my personal life I was not at the best part to mm -hmm. try to like so I was like okay I think this body of work should be about my emotions and me dealing with what I'm dealing with right now so it shows so like halfway through you were like um let me bring out what i'm feeling right now sort yeah. of thing. Okay. so it shows a guy who is deemed to be mentally ill um so the colorful side shows how he is inside you know he's very the mixing of colors shows the mixing of emotions mixing the mixing of ideologies and you know People will look at him as crazy, so you know, that kind of stigma is implemented inside of him. And the realistic side shows him in reality, you know, he's crying because he wants to be helped, but people are stigmatizing him, and you know, mm. people say like he's crazy, and you know, that kind of thing, you know, so that was your idea for it. How long does it take <clears> to do, what was the longest you took to do a painting, or was the shortest? The longest it took to do a painting, now this is considering rest and different stuff in between. About four or five months, if I was to just take in consideration work time, about two months, two okay. to two and a half months. And but if you had a, a whole day free, uh -huh. how long would you spend painting? I would usually start from eight o'clock in the morning and stop at 12 to eat lunch then from 1 to 4 then from 6 to till it's tired. 6 to 8 <laughs> then from 9 to 12 or 9 to 1 5, 6, 7 like 8, 9 about 12 hours it does if I'm really so like in the zone it, it depends like if I'm working on a a commission for a client or if I'm working on something that needs to be done as soon as possible I would stretch myself to try to get it done you mm -hmm. know but if I'm don't have any kind of deadlines or anything like that I would just book eight hours a day you know I usually stop at five or four o'clock I was listening to someone speak and he was he was saying that artists are some of the most productive people in the world <laughs> Because the amount of time you all would spend on like one body of work is actually insane. I'm trying to imagine myself dedicating two months, two to four months to mm. paint something, right? And I realize, when, once I start thinking about it, I realize I'm not meant to be an artist, you know? Well, obviously, you could be doing stuff other than painting mm -hmm. for the two months. I could be doing five, well, this is acrylic, so acrylic dries very fast. So, I work in oils now. Oils have a luxury of drying time. It takes a very long time to dry. So I could work on one layer of a painting today, work on the next layer tomorrow because by tomorrow the paint is still wet. Mm -hmm. And I could work on three paintings for the week. Okay. So it depends on what medium you're using. So for oils, to me, I could work on a different pieces at the same time. And to artists, yes, they're very productive, but they're not going to be painting every single day, you know? Makes sense, makes they're sense. not going to be painting. Because we get burned out. Like, right now, I'm very much burnt out because I've been painting 
on this but it worked for about a year now and emotionally and physically I just not really there right now even though I have stuff to do you get burnt out very quickly so you have to kind of pace yourself you can't expect to be working two months for two months every single day for eight to twelve hours mm-hmm. you you're going to get burnt out that makes sense I would for sure what's going on here Okay, um, this one is Oh, this for, is a video. Yeah. Interesting. So this one is called... What's the name of this one? I think it's called Time Travel, I think. Um, it kind of... So I was... So while I was in my kind of mental state, I had different ideas, or different things that kind of were curiosity to me. So like space kind of you know, interest me at that point in time. So the kind of effect with the brush strokes um, coming out of the eyes of the model uh, from the neck kind of give the illusion of the Milky Way, mm-hmm. you know, that, that kind of thing. So that was basically the general idea for it, you know. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Let's talk about your art journey now. Right, let me just move that. I think there's one more. All right, let's see what's going on. This one is our next video. Ooh, now I know this person. Yeah, that is Kadeen. Mm-hmm. Big model. This was his second painting I did. Now, as I, as I say, um, most times there's not much of a literal meaning to the, to the painting. It's more of how it makes you feel. Because mm. to me, some art don't need to be explained. It needs to be, feel, need, need to be felt, sorry. So this painting is called Fading Away. And I was feeling like I was fading away in the background, you know, because people didn't know what I was going through. Mm. And people was, was really taking me on. So I was, felt like I, I was fading away, basically. You know, so I kind of give that illusion with parts of a body just breaking apart and, you know. And this seems to be like the most aggressive use of that like fading technique. You know, mm, out of all, well, out of all these others that I've seen so far, yeah, this one is, yeah, this one is pretty aggressive too. You know, I think this one is this one is interesting one. So I, I'm really just trying to spark this sort of appreciation for art and beauty in in myself. Recently, I posted something on Instagram in my caption, kind of like speaking about how there's so much around us that we don't understand, and uh, this guy Joseph. Yeah, but I think I might be watching his name, right? He was saying that we, we, we sort of don't see beauty because there's too much to see, you know? And, and, and one of the ideas is that, and you were speaking it about today, is that we as human beings mm. oftentimes don't face our emotions that much. And we rely on artists to kind of tap into that emotional space to sort of, you know, reveal to us certain truths that we can't face ourselves. Mm. You know, do you feel that sort of way, like like the burden of being able to be in connect with all your emotions, mm. right? Do you think that that that's something that that you enjoy, appreciate, or do you feel as though that art is something that you have to do? Um, do you understand what I'm, what I'm asking there? Not much. Somewhat, but yeah. okay. So I'm a, I would say I'm a very emotional person, like very moody sometimes i once i'm not bipolar for mm-hmm. sure but there's, there's certain things that i would connect with emotionally so to answer your question but do you when you feel those emotions do you feel as though art has to to, to sort of be like your escape right or do you feel as though like uh i don't know like our regular people we deal with it somewhere else or like ignore the emotion Okay. Well, no, the question I'm asking is a little difficult because you are in, like, believe it or not, artists have an important role to play, like, in society's development, mm-hmm. right? Because to me, artists are sort of ahead of the curve. They sort of bring to life feelings or things that regular people experience but can't articulate. Mm. So one of the examples that really struck me, there's this local artist. He does, oh my gosh, his name just slipped my mind. If you call out artist names, it might ring a bell. Leroy Cook. 
theoretical. I don't think that's him. But okay, he does. He did uh, a series of paintings where mm. he was bringing forth stories in the Bible in uh, uh, in a Caribbean context, right? And it was really <laughs> ironic because I, I went to the Archbishop's did house. Did he exhibit recently or something? I think so. I think so. It is she loveless. No, no. It may have been the first person he called. But one of the reasons why it really struck me was because the Archbishop has it around his, his, his house, right? All mm. the pictures. And he was pointing it out to me um, that, look, look at how inspired this person was to bring religion into the Caribbean context. And one of the reasons why it was so pre revel Wait, prevalent... Is it, is it Jackie Hingston? Yes, yes, right. Jackie Hingston, right? And it was really prevalent because they had just torn down the statue of... Of um, or they're just this this oh, grace, the statue the of black, Christopher Columbus. The Black Lives Matter. Yeah, process. so all of that thing was going on. And one of the questions that was that was coming up is what was religion's role? You know, mm. um, why did these people bring this this religion to us? Is it really our own religion? And he, what he was saying is that he did this guy did this years ago, and he was uh, sort of encouraging people through his art to look at religion and make it their own through, in in their own context. Right, like, and and we we he sort of like was like a visionary. We are now looking to reject all of those things. Or, or, or. and in the U.S., they were tearing down statues of of white Jesus because they felt as though um, it should be representative of the people that 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 and the space that it's in. You know, and Jesus was never and Jesus wasn't white. You know, so why are they doing this? And it seemed like this artist tapped into something like unconscious in our society. You know, mm -hmm. and I just want to tell you that artists have. A very important role and I don't think and I hope you should never stop now that segues into how rough it is to be an artist these days right okay you know you are trying to make a career out of this right mm -hmm. how just try and give me an idea how rough is it out there to be an artist okay it is very hard for emotion artists so I did do some research kind of the kind of questions going to ask me yes so so this is more of the context of a way. So usually artists in the beginning stages, they depend on art galleries to kind of get, a, cause first of all, they don't have a market for themselves. They don't have the connection to buyers or collectors. Um, so they depend on art galleries, right? And art galleries is a business, it's a kind of business making kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. The art industry is a billion dollar industry globally. So being, a, being an emerging artist is very hard because most of that money comes from well-known artists. That's true. That's so, true. Okay, so to answer your question, right? Locally in Trinidad, I'm, I'm new to this whole art world, right? For my, for my, um, perspective on what I know thus far. Um, it is very hard to get into galleries because usually they will take art, they will quicker take artists who has a market for themselves and who knows that they will sell potentially and who workers in demand is very rare, mm -hmm. you know, because they look at others and investments, you know, so so you have to sort of convince people as an emerging artist that an investment in your art is worth it. And that's really difficult. I think as an emerging artist, you just have to focus on producing work mm -hmm. and just bettering yourself in terms of skill and creativity. That aspect of in your art career will come, it will follow, because people, once they see your work and enjoy your work, it will get out there, your name will get out there. So you have to kind of create a market for yourself online or just on the word of mouth, you know? So just focus on producing good quality work in series, make a, make a body of work in series on some sort of ideology or idea, and it will just follow eventually because I never told that I would get, before I came into Fatima, I never knew about Horizons Art Gallery, Wild Gallery, the Art Society. I never knew about these art galleries. So all, all I knew about is working, mm. trying to be good at what I am. And when I came into Fatima, I got into Instagram in terms of social media, in terms and of marketing, yourself. marketing myself. Then I heard about these galleries. I visited these galleries. I spoke to the the 
gallery assistants, the directors and stuff like that. And that's how I kind of got into this whole thing. And based on what they said, they said to focus on your work, try to be the best you can be. Mm -hmm. And once people like your work, they reach out to you, you know. And the best thing to do right now as an emerging artist in Trinidad is join the art society, take part in their shows that they have mm -hmm. yearly. Um, and they just grind. Yeah, and grind. their horizons, they do group shows mm -hmm. with new artists. These are ways you could kind of try to get yourself out there. But you have to have a body of work. You have to consistently be producing work because people, because people won't buy, for instance, if, I, if someone buys this painting here, and I decided to stop painting. The investment is kind of lost because they knew that I'm not going to be producing more work and there's not much, like, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, so it's kind of like, especially as an emerging artist, you're expecting them or you, you sort of, you see in their potential when yes. you buy their art uh -huh. and at, like in the future, the, you expect it to grow exponentially like it doesn't make sense producing five bodies of work at one time right mm. and expecting that price to go up right you, you don't really see that well and unless you were some some super genius and i think what happens also is that the person themselves like let's say it was a tragedy let's say it was, a fi it was five paintings but this person um was passed, away. passed away or something then i could see that happening but if it was like an artist who you drop five pieces Right, not really having an emotional connection, and then you went on your life like normal and like just vanished from the face of the earth. Like there's no like sort of legacy behind well, the art. As I said, well, in movie I suggested to you, Violet, but so I think I see last Buzzworth, name. Yeah. Um, one of the persons in the show said, um, "What is the purpose of art if people don't see it?" You know, and let's be real. People who buy art have expendable income and very influential, and they see it as an investment. You know, mm -hmm. the competition between wanting it to be displayed and being it being purchased. Do you think that that let's say hurts in the art industry in any sort of way? Um, so there's two ways that artists purchase. There's the primary way, which is through art galleries, and there's the other way, which is through auctions. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as an artist, I would like to I would like to create art and know that I can live off that I can live off of it, essentially, right? Yes, I like everybody to see my work, but it all boils down onto, you know, if you want to live from your art, live on your art, you have to try and get it sold. You know, mm -hmm. people who buy art really and truly who sees the value in it are people who have the expendable income and people who are more in the corporate businesses, people who are, you know, well-known and stuff like that. So people, everybody could see your ass and enjoy it, but only a certain percentage would buy it, mm -hmm. you know? And people would think that oh, art is expensive and, you know, they don't see why, it's, why is that valued so much. Art is valued based on the name Every artist is very well known. Let's say Leonardo da Vinci. He, there was this painting that was auctioned off. I think it was in 2018 in Christine's auction house. It was like 450 million dollars. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> because because <laughs> the person who bought it is this billionaire, mm. you know, and he is a pioneer in the art world, you know, so. The value of art really depends on the artist, his name, and the people who are buying it who collect his work, and the gallery houses. If the galleries houses are a very prestige house, so usually the art will sell through the gallery first, right? And the secondary way that is sold is through auction houses. So the buyer will sell it to somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, and those transactions in, in terms of who's buying it and where it's going to, all that plays into the, the value and how in demand right. the artist is and, and, you know, that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So. I see that, man. I yeah. see that. So if, as I said, it, it seems to be like sort of a niche industry, 
um, mm. the art world. What would you tell people like me who want to get an appreciation for art but see it as like, uh, let's say, uh, an activity for, for the wealthy? What would you encourage us to do? When we spoke last time, one of the things that you said was, why not buy from an upcoming artist, right? Okay, like, what, so, what, what is the benefit in doing that? So buying from an upcoming artist, the work is cheap, it's affordable. And as I was telling you before, over time, once the artist continually produce work and make a name for himself, and, you know, his other work that you didn't purchase probably sells other people, more, inf more inf influential influential people it goes out to museums prestige galleries the work becomes more valuable so if you decide to sell it to somebody which is the secondary way of buying art mm -hmm. you sell it at a high price because that is how much the art at that point in time worth so buying art is an investment but you know as the artist he or she have to put in the work in terms of producing the work and getting any money. It's not really, it's not easy, you know, being like this great artist, like locally, Leroy Clark, like he took years to get there, mm -hmm. you know, and his work is very, like, to me, I love Leroy Clark work because it's, it's a lot of like, textures and a lot of ideas and a lot of stuff goes on to his work you know so it depends on what you like you know it depends on what how you connect with it and stuff like that you know when you price it so there's an next person outside of the art industry trying to figure it out when you look or, or decide on the price for your mm. art what goes through your mind well i take in consideration the size of the work the time I spent and the raw materials I spent on the work. That is essentially how I price work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have to take in consideration that because I'm new to the art world and I'm upcoming, I can't overprice or have a high expectation of how much it should cost and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. So you said, uh, <laughs> I was still trying to wrap my head around it, 400 and what? 450 million. 450 million. Okay, that painting was the painting of Jesus mm -hmm. and it was deemed to be lost. And that painting is like hundreds of years old. And Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci is a. Yeah, he's great. Right, he's a, he was a scientist, uh, uh, artist. A philosopher. Right, he was all that, you know. And his work is, come on, like. and. Essentially, it, it all boils down to how much you are willing to pay for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. The billionaire, he's who bought the painting, he saw the value in it, and he, you know, yeah. sold it. He so bought it for that. So we comparing that price, four hundred fifty million, right? Now that would be like the extreme end of things. Um, are you willing to let the people know what would be the price range of your works? Do you are you are you at at liberty to discuss that? I think it's best that whoever have interest in my art should come and see, come and see my show ah, i like that i like but that. it's not going to cost tens of thousands and stuff right right, right. I, I don't actually give a, a figure because mm -hmm. you know people who's watching this who in the gallery at that time would, would not like that but <laughs> It's not gonna cost tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't wanna set you up there. I don't wanna set Cause you up. I'm not at that stage in my career. I, like I said, I could price that in price at that high level because people don't really know me. You know, mm -hmm. people know, as I say, Jackie Hinston, Carol, Carol, Car Sylvester, Lisa Wakana. Like these are really well-known artists in Trinidad and probably regionally. So mm -hmm. artists like that who works for years and create a following and who like continuously work and redefine their work you know they are at liberty to price the work at such prices so what, because what they would be a price they're looking at like a hundred thousand sort of thing what are you talking about so let's say one of those big artists Lisa Khan or, or Jackie Hingston okay if you went to an art gallery and I, I've went but usually I try not to look at price tags because it's hard for me to wrap my mm. my head around that okay the right? most expensive thing I've seen in an art gallery in Trinidad locally is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars interesting you could um, buy a car with that yeah <laughs> but you had to take in consideration the gallery 
takes the commission because right. they have to, you know, get what well, they have to like connect with people who are interested in buying and marketing and all that jazz behind the scenes. Because when I was when I'm actually um, preparing for my show and in preparation for my show, there was a lot of stuff I learned in terms of what went in behind the scenes of preparing for a show. Because it's a, it's very much costly to have an exhibition because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that you take in consideration all right so all right. the the percentage that the gallery takes is is well worth it mm-hmm. so i think there's a perfect opportunity to really promote your show um what's is so how do you think these things work you have a name for it um well you well i thought sort of my body of work just creating the work mm-hmm. and i usually after the fact i think of a name that goes with the idea and the aesthetic of the piece and collectively I looked at the work and I decided what is the name so the the name of my show is emotions because real and truly the whole body of work plays on how I felt Mm -hmm. you know different stages of my mental health and what I was going through initially is my emotions is emotional kind of stuff you know it's deep stuff but to plug my show, my show is at the Art Society. Mm-hmm. Um, Where's the location? Federation Park? Federation Park, Park New Town Hall has been. Um, it's opening for the public on Saturday from 12 noon to 6 p.m., but the code is on Sunday and Monday. But they had a book to come in because of, you know, what is going on with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to keep the numbers low in terms of who's coming to the gallery. I link all those, like, where you could book and all those things. You'll send it to me. Mm-hmm. I'll put it in the description. But you could call the gallery. It's 622 9827. Or you can email. Whatever contact information you want the people to know about, I will link it in the, in the description, right? Okay. So I'm like a plan there. So we're going to just finish off with some questions that I got on uh, my story. Just I'll just choose three or two. Um, what are your okay no 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 nice what are your intentions when you share your work right uh and it's kind of like something we spoke about already all right is it it let us say is money the driving motivation or you just really want to share your passion for the world well let's let's be completely real Mm -hmm. right as an artist who is trying to make a career out of it or money will be somewhat be like behind the real reason money is always there in terms of mm. selling the work right and i think it makes sense too because if you're comfortable right from selling your art you can have more time to mm. create more art holding on your skills and i i think that's what most artists in all genres do it's kind of like if i can monetize this i could continue doing this for but, as long as possible you know money is not everything you know mm-hmm. money is money don't really make you happy me personally what drives me what the question you're asking me is try to bring forward to the world i'm trying to get out there internationally you know my art and what is my ideas and what i would like to see because i use art as a way to talk to people mm. Because, you know, people, like, use social media to, like, Twitter and stuff to give their thoughts. Mm -hmm. I give my thoughts through my paintings. So, like, this body of work is all about depression and mental health. How important is your mental health throughout your life, you know, because it takes a toll on on yourself initially, physically, mentally, spiritually. It takes a toll on you. Mm -hmm. So I really want to shed light on how important is your mental health and how you should be in sync with your emotions and stuff like that so um, i just like to somewhat teach through my arts right right okay i like that all right we'll, we'll end it off there i'm now seeing any time <laughs> and i'll get you over to your your um we're going to the art exhibition now yeah. for a little while i'll see what i can see and um maybe i can give you a little sneak peek though i doubt all right karen this was wonderful um I'll, I'll send you the clip as soon as possible and yeah. all the best from friday forward thank you guys make sure to check him out if you all don't don't talk to me again <laughs> all right <laughs>